what we have running alongside that is the, is, the, yeah, is the need to make sure that our security systems are coping with every change that comes along because every new piece of software has a new hole and it has a different problem. And it, so are the security providers and the security systems keeping pace with the developments in other areas of this market? And I would say just about. The game is really staying just abreast or slightly ahead of the bad guys. And the reality is that we still hear cases of security breaches. And so clearly, sometimes they, get, they are successful. But a lot of investments and a lot of uh, attention has gone into the, you know, strengthening the security framework. Uh, and and that's, that's, an, that's across a number of factors. That's making sure that the organization as a whole has a means to identify the threats, to then manage the intrusions when they do happen and fix the problem so that they don't happen again. And so a lot of investments, a lot of headway has been made in, in evolving the security systems such that they are able to cope with the threats, but it's a constant battle. So how would you frame to a CEO who's going through this process, how would you frame the issue and the potential solution? We focus very much on the framework at the onset. Uh, clearly, you know, identifying where the threats are likely to come, come from. And uh, the threat identification is, is the first step. The second step is really the controls mechanism. What do you do once those threats have been identified? How do you rectify them and then you know, make sure that those breaches don't come in the same form and shape? And uh, that, that is, involves many, it's not just a function for the IT department uh, or the risk management folks, it's actually something that's the ownership of the entire bank. We hear about data all the time. Data is either the greatest opportunity of the future or a major problem. How do you see it? Data is fundamental. Uh, it's, it's no good having a, a very good front end um, that the client can interact with, but uh, it's, it doesn't have the relevant information. And so, you know, extracting the data from the product systems and getting that right to the right level of granularity is so important in terms of having a compelling digital proposition. And therein lies the problem because a lot of times that data sits in disparate systems, in functional silos throughout the organization. And so there's a need to aggregate them. And it's a, it's a huge task, uh, and, and, it's, and it's not so easy to do. What's the benefit of aggregating it? Well, when you aggregate the data, then uh, the, you get a single customer view of, the, of uh, a single customer view. Uh, you be the, the customers will be able to have a, a, a full view of their portfolio. They're able to better make decisions uh, based on that aggregated view. So, without which, you know, it's it's actually very difficult uh, to advise. Uh, the client in terms of what they really should do with their portfolios and their investments. What about data shared amongst institutions, not just within the institution? That is always a tricky one. Um, you know, it's this, uh, with customer consent, um, some of the sharing could be made possible. Uh, but again, uh, a lot of times, uh, e even with customer consent, sometimes it's, it's, it's quite difficult to have that data shared easily across when uh, different institutions, when they come in different formats, uh, you know, the nomenclature is different. And, and I, I think ultimately one needs to look at what is uh, the, the benefits from sharing that data. Um, oftentimes, the low-hanging fruit is in getting the customer information that is resident in the transaction systems, in the customer information systems within the bank itself. And just being able to get access to that uh, will reap a lot of strong benefits without even having to look outside of the bank. Are there regulatory implications to the data potential? Absolutely. I mean, banking is all about data privacy and client confidentiality. Uh, so in the effort to make data more accessible for decision making and transactions and so on, everyone's cognizant of the fact they still have to stay compliant and make sure that data is not compromised. And so controls are very important to put in place. And we as an organization play a key role in terms of reviewing frameworks and making sure that the, the adequate security and data controls and are put in place. And obviously doing the audit and the remediation work 
that comes with that to make sure that the banks don't run, run foul of, of, of regulations or potentially get a very upset customer. How much of the challenge lies in the ability to maintain constant vigilance uh, and be up to date with all the change that's happening? And how ready are the institutions to take that challenge or do they need to look for third party advice? Because of the pace of change and where change is happening around the world, uh, so for example, you may get an innovative new fintech solution that comes out of the valley, but is it appropriate for deployment in the Asian context? And there's, there's so many instances of this happening around the world. How does one institution keep track of where the opportunities are and where the threats are? And, and that's where we as a firm come in, because with our global network, and working with clients and around the world, with regulators and so on. Working with a third party professional services provider like us would be a much better uh, situation to be able to help them understand where the potential opportunities are and where the threats could be.